In this video, we will learn how to reverse park a car into a bay using the 90 degree angle parking or three lines method parking technique. Follow along with this step by step process and use the reference points provided to guide you through this parking method. Here is a preview of what's coming in this video. Why does reverse parking matter? A quick overview of the reverse parking procedure. Requirements and preparations needed to ace this parking method. Breaking down the method into clear, easy to follow steps. Answering some frequently asked questions about this parking technique. And in the end, some tips that will help you to become a reverse parking pro in no time. Just note that the longer you stick around, the more details you'll gain. So let's get into it. Why reverse parking? This parking is an effective method if A, the parking spot that is available is on your left hand side. So let's say you are driving in a parking lot and this is the only parking space that is available here. B, you are based in a location where reverse bay parking is a maneuver that is part of the driving test. Also, if you reverse park your car into a bay, you will have an easier job and a better view of potential hazards when driving out of the parking space. General overview. Let's take a look at the parking procedure and the big picture. Imagine you are driving and want to reverse park your car in this empty spot here. First, number the lines of the target parking spot as 0, 1, 2, and 3. Then move the left mirror of your car past the third line until you see it in the middle of the passenger door. Next, reverse back and turn the steering wheel completely to the left. Once the car is straight and parallel to the lines of the target bay, straighten the steering wheel and continue reversing until the whole car is in the parking bay. This technique is called the 90 degree parking technique because the car travels at a 90 degree angle to fit in the parking bay. It is also referred to as the three lines method parking because the reference point for starting this parking is three lines away from the target bay. Very simple, right? There are just a lot of details that need to be addressed, so keep watching. Requirements and preparation. Before we get started, you need to make sure that your seat is properly adjusted. There is no set formula for adjusting the car seat as everyone's body shape and height are different. And also the purpose of this video is not to talk about this in so much detail. But here is a quick guide and some guidelines. Sit far back in your seat and as straight and as comfortable as possible. Bring your seat high enough so that you can see over the dashboard. Keep your legs slightly bent, comfortably reaching the pedals. Stretch your arms on top of the wheel. Ensure that your wrists reach the top of the steering wheel while maintaining a slight bend in your arms. This provides better control of the steering wheel. Adjust the steering wheel for clear visibility of the speedometer. Fasten your seatbelt after making these adjustments. Your mirrors are properly adjusted. Once the seat is adjusted, also adjust your mirrors. To do so, ensure that you can see a portion of your car's body in each mirror. Avoid angling them excessively towards or away from the body of your car. Also avoid angling them too far downward or upward. After all, the purpose of these mirrors is to help you see other cars, line markings on the road, and determine your car's position relative to other vehicles and road markings. For many cars, if you can see the handles of the front doors in your side mirrors, your mirror's positionings is just right. This will help a lot with parking, and you will see why these adjustments matter later in the video. Also make sure to clean your mirrors if they are dirty. Your windows are clean. If your windows are dirty, give them a good clean, especially the front windows, rear window screen and front window screen. Your reverse camera, if you have one, is clean and free of any obstructions. You also need to know that when reversing a car, the steering wheel moves the back of the car in the direction that you turn the steering wheel. For example, if you turn the steering wheel to the left, the back of the car will go to the left. And if you turn the steering wheel to the right, the back of the car will go to the right. You know about dry steering or static steering? What's dry steering? Dry steering is turning the steering wheel 
while the car is stationary. It's a topic that often sparks controversy regarding its impact on your car. Just keep in mind that we'll avoid dry steering in this video and if you do dry steering you won't fail your driving test and you won't get a mark down either. Okay, so with these out of the way, let's dive into the details of this maneuver with step-by-step -step instructions. Step 1. Spotting and Approaching So I am driving here in this car park on the left side of the road. I have already spotted a bay where I want to park my car. This one. The one with the tree on one side and the bush on the other side. As I get closer to my target bay, I check my rear view mirror, left mirror, put the left indicator on and do a shoulder check to the left to make sure there are no other vehicles such as bicycles, motorcycles, personal mobility device riders or pedestrians next to me. It's all clear. Great. Step 2. Stopping. Then I need to stop my car at the right spot. To know where I need to stop the car, I keep an eye on my target bay and count. Zero. One, two, and three. I then move my left mirror past the third line to see the third line in the middle of the passenger door about here. Where to exactly stop at the start depends on the size of your car. For big cars, you need to move until this line is in line with the middle of your car or your shoulders. For smaller than average cars, you need to stop where you see this line in line with the left mirror of your car. I am using a Toyota Corolla hatchback, which is an average sized car. From inside the car, you will see something like this. This reference point may vary slightly in different cars depending on the driver's height and seat position. If you are short and have your seat too far forward, you should align this line with your shoulders. If you are tall and have your seat further back, you should aim to see this line around the door handles of the passenger seat door. Finding your perfect reference point may require some trial and error. Once you find your perfect reference point, you can put a sticky tape or something similar on your door to mark where you should align the line for easy future reference. After a while, you will know exactly where it is and can remove the tape. And yes, it's okay to leave the tape on for your driving test. For me, this is my reference point. The third line is slightly past this door handle. Step 3. Preparation Once I stop at the correct spot using my reference point, I then put the gear into reverse while still holding the brake. Putting the car into reverse turns on the reverse lights. So at this stage, my car's reverse lights and left indicators are on indicating to others behind me that I am about to reverse to the left. Step 4. Observation and Scanning Now, I check the road ahead again for any oncoming cars and also around the car, doing a 360 degree check before backing up. Now, the rule is this, the reversing car must give way to all other cars. So wait for any cars behind you to go around you, and also for any oncoming cars to drive past you. Other drivers usually do that when they see your left indicator and your reverse lights. Sometimes other drivers are courteous and wait for you to finish parking. If that's the case and you are in a driving test situation, just check with the examiner and start the maneuver. Step 5. Starting the maneuver So I have checked all around my car and I know it's safe to move backward. I check the right hand side again to ensure that there are no cars trying to overtake me and that it's safe to turn the steering wheel. I need to move the car now but I won't accelerate to do so. I decrease the pressure on my brakes and let the car roll backward very slowly. At the same time I turn the steering wheel completely to the left until I can't turn it anymore. As the car goes backward I keep checking my surroundings. Three questions that are often asked here are 1. Can we use the reverse camera while reverse parking? The answer is yes, you can, as long as you don't just rely on it and don't stare at it. Cameras can break and extreme weather conditions can affect their effectiveness and visibility. 
Also, there may be situations where you need to park a car that does not have a camera. Therefore, it is important to be able to maneuver a car without relying solely on the reverse camera. And this brings us to the second question. Can we use mirrors when doing a reverse bay parking? Again, the answer is yes, as long as you don't entirely rely on just mirrors. When reversing, you need to physically look behind and all around the car most of the time. And you can get help from your reverse camera and mirrors as well. Checking mirrors will help us to see the lines and check if we have the same distance from the lines on either side of the car. Having clean mirrors and windows will help you easily see the lines of the target bay through your mirrors. If you didn't have a chance to clean your windows, that's okay. You can wind them down before reversing to make it easier to see the lines through your mirrors. And the third question, what if another car approaches out of nowhere? Do I stop and give way? The answer is no. At the start of this maneuver, as long as you are still straight and cars are coming, you need to stop and give way to them. Sometimes you check and don't see any cars, but while you start backing up and turning the steering wheel, some cars might approach from around the corner. In that case, you don't need to stop anymore. You need to get out of your way and finish the maneuver, as stopping in a diagonal position will block them. So I keep going backward and once I see the car is almost straight, I straighten my steering wheel by turning it to the right. So at this stage the car looks like this. The body of the car is parallel to the lines of the target bay, whereas the front tires are turned to the left. If we don't straighten the tires and keep going backwards, we are going to end up like this. So it's very important to straighten the tires at this stage. But again, two questions here. First, how do I know if my car is straight? I can check a few things to help me find out if I am straight. A. Checking the horizon and see if the front of my car is parallel to the horizon in front. B. Check in my reverse camera and see if I am straight in the middle of the bay and parallel to the lines of the bay. These days, many cars are equipped with reverse cameras. Here is a quick guide on how to use the reverse camera. The reverse camera is activated as soon as you shift your gear into reverse. Reverse cameras usually have these straight vertical lines on the sides which show the width of the car. Depending on the type of car you have, the color of these lines is different. In my car, they are blue. They are usually slightly wider than the width of the car to provide a safety margin. For example, the width of my Toyota Corolla is 1 meter and 780 centimeters. Whereas the width that is displayed with these lines is actually same as the width of the parking bay that is 2 meters and 400 centimeters. So there is a bit of buffer leaving some room for human error. And that means that even though you see these lines very close to the parking bay lines or right on the lines, the actual distance between your car and the lines is greater than what is displayed on the camera. Let's try that. This is what I see in the reverse camera of my car. The vertical lines of the camera are right on the parking bay lines. But let's go outside and see how it actually looks. As you can see, there are still some room between the body of my car and the lines of the parking bay. About 30 centimeters on each side. So to find out if you are straight using your reverse camera, simply align these lines parallel to the lines of the parking spot. Ideally with equal distance from both sides as shown in the example. C. Checking my mirrors. If you remember, at the beginning of the video, I talked about the mirrors adjustments. And that was for here. If my mirrors are properly adjusted, I can see the lines through my mirrors. Once I see that the body of my car is parallel to the lines of the bay, it means I am straight. If you forgot to adjust your mirrors before parking, don't worry. Sometimes simply raising your head up and looking to the sides can help you see the lines through your mirrors. So feel free to move your body and head in any way that helps you to see the lines. 
and D checking the lines of the front base. If I see the lines straight, I am straight. Also in some car parks, the bays are symmetrical. If that's the case, you can use the lines of the bay in front to make sure you are straight. Okay, so now we know how to determine if the body of our car is straight and parallel to the lines of the parking bay. Now, the second question is, how do I straighten the steering wheel? During this stage of the parking maneuver, the car's tires are turned to the left. You need to make them straight. To do that, turn your steering wheel to the right. But how much should I turn it? Take a look at this section of the steering wheel. Every car's steering wheel has a similar part. When you turn the steering wheel completely to the left, this part will be positioned somewhere along this section of the steering wheel. The specific position depends on the type of car you drive. For example, in a Toyota Corolla hatchback, it's here. Whereas in a Suzuki Swift, it will be positioned all the way to the top. Regardless, to straighten the steering wheel, you need to turn it to the right. When this part reaches the lower position for the second time, the steering wheel will be straight. Okay, great. So we are straight, let's move on to the next step. Step 6, stopping and securing the car. Then I need to keep going backward until I am fully inside the bay. I can use a few things to find the perfect spot to stop my car. Reverse camera to see how far I can go in. Almost every car's reverse camera nowadays has these horizontal lines as well. These lines on a car's reverse camera display are part of a feature known as parking guidelines. These lines are designed to assist drivers when parking and provide an estimate of how much space is available behind the vehicle. The most important line among these lines is the red line, which indicates how far you can back up before hitting any obstacles behind you. It is important to note that this line is displayed closer to the objects than their actual distance. For example, let's back up to this parking space and move the red line to the wheel stop at the end of the bay. When looking at the reverse camera, you might think that you cannot back up any further because you might hit the wheel stop. Now, let's get out of the car and see how it looks. As you can see, there is still about 54 centimeters distance to the wheel stop. Remember, this is a Toyota Corolla hatchback. The actual distance between the red line of the reverse camera and the barriers behind the car is not universal. It varies depending on the make and model of your car. To determine the exact distance, refer to your car manual or try to find it through careful trial and error with someone present. It's also important to notice what's at the end of the parking bay where you are parking your car. They can be wheel stops. Wheel stops, also known as parking blocks or curb stops, are physical barriers placed at the end of parking spaces to limit the travel of a vehicle into a parking space. They are typically made of durable materials such as concrete, rubber, or plastic. The standard maximum height for wheel stops is 10 cm. This applies to both plastic and rubber wheel stops. Knowing this information can be helpful when parking as the back of most cars sits higher than 10 cm from the ground. For example, the back of my car sits about 23 cm above the ground at the very end. Therefore, I can reverse until the wheel stop disappears from my camera, knowing that I won't hit it if I do so. If you are unsure of how high the back of your car is, I recommend you measure it. Trust me, you'll be glad you did. Let's try this. I'll go in reverse and stop as soon as the wheel stop disappears. Now, let's go out and see how it looks. Perfect. The back of my car sits right above the wheel stop and does not obstruct pedestrians walking behind my car. So if you are driving a car that its back is not too long, you can continue further into the parking space until the wheel stop is no longer visible in your reverse camera. This will allow you to fit nicely into the parking bay and reduce the risk of your car's front end being damaged by neighboring cars attempting to park. Something important to note is that some concrete wheel stops do not comply with this standard because they exceed the maximum height. 
For example, the concrete villa stops in this car park are 15 cm high, while these ones are 25 cm. Therefore, when parking in a space with concrete villa stops, be more vigilant. If you believe they are higher than 15 cm, make sure to stop your car once the red line of the reverse camera reaches the villa stop. Parking bay line. If there is a parking bay line at the end of your parking bay, the safest option is to stop the car when the red line of the reverse camera reaches the white line at the end of the parking bay or slightly before that. The best advice is to check the section of your car manual that covers the reverse camera. Alternatively, you can go to an empty car park, reverse back into a bay and try different positions. Take note of where the line sits, get out of your car, Check the space behind you and repeat this process until you find the perfect stopping point for your car. While this may require some effort, it is a one-time task that is well worth it. It will save you a lot of stress and worries every time you park. Wall If there is a wall behind you, there are usually wheel stops at the end of parking bays to prevent cars from going too far and hitting the wall. However, if there are no wheel stops and only a wall at the back, do not continue reversing once the red light of the reverse camera reaches the bottom of the wall. Checking mirrors Let's say I am driving a car that doesn't have a reverse camera. I can simply check my mirrors to see the end of my car and the parking bay. Again, proper adjustment of mirrors is crucial at this stage. Also when checking mirrors, feel free to raise your body or head to be able to see behind you clearly. Shoulders Also when my shoulders reach halfway of the white lines, that's a good time to stop the car. Next, bay line. Or when I see the center of my right mirror is level with the tip of the next bay line. Once I stop, I put the car into P, that is park. If your car has a handbrake or foot parking brake, put it on as well. My car's handbrake is automatic, so it's activated when I park the car. If you are driving a manual car, put the gear into neutral, apply the handbrake and you're done. And if you are leaving your car, it is safer to shift the gear into either first or reverse gear for safety reasons in a manual car. Step 7. Double checking. Once I park and secure the car, I can open the door with caution, especially if there is a car parked next to me. I double check to see if I am parallel in the middle of the bay or just use my mirrors to check if the car is in the correct position. Step 8. Confirmation. If I am in a driving test situation, I can then tell the driving examiner that I am finished and wait for their next instruction. When exiting the parking bay, I make sure to do a 360 degree check again, indicating the direction that I am going and cautiously drive out while watching for pedestrians and other vehicles. Now some frequently asked questions. Will I fail the test if I touch the lines slightly when coming in? Touching the line slightly when coming in is fine. It's not a fail in the driving test. The lines of the parking bays are usually longer than the length of average sized cars. So even if there is a car parked in the neighboring bay, you won't hit it. There are certain scenarios where touching the line can create a potential problem, but there is a way to fix it. We will go through that in an upcoming video, so stay tuned. How much distance is there between you and the left side? Well, I was driving about a meter away from the left side, which is about the width of an open car door. As you can see, I am about the length of my car, wide open and a little bit more. Depending on the size of your car, this distance varies between 1 to 1.5 meters. The larger your car, the longer the distance should be. For smaller cars, a meter distance is enough, whereas for larger cars, it's advisable to maintain a distance closer to one and a half meters. What if I can't get this right on the first attempt? Can I go forward and backward to adjust my position? 
If you are unable to park your car correctly on the first attempt, you may have the chance to adjust your position. However, this depends on how bad your initial parking job was. If you parked your car between the lines, then you have not parked correctly and you would have hit other cars if there were any cars parked next to you. But if your car is just slightly off center or not completely straight, then you may be given a second chance to fix it. Can I lower my mirrors when parking? Yes, you can, but you should ask the driving examiner for permission first. And also after completing the parking, remember to return the mirrors to their original position. Can I put my hand behind the passenger seat when reversing? This depends on your location. In some places, this is a mark down in a driving test. Remember to keep both hands on the steering wheel when turning it. Also in certain locations, palming or turning the steering wheel with the palm of your hand may not be allowed. So again, you need to check this with your local driving instructor. Does this method work at all car parks? It depends on the size of the parking base. Parking space dimensions can vary, but they generally align with international standards. A common guideline for a standard parking space is approximately 2.4 meters wide and 5.4 meters long. However, it's important to check local regulations and guidelines, as there may be variations depending on the specific jurisdiction and design considerations of each parking facility. If the width of a parking space where you are attempting to park your car is less than 2.4 meters, you will need to find a different reference point. However, for your driving test, you will be taken to a standard sized car park, so there is no need to worry. And here are some tips to help you master this parking method. 1. Choose an empty car park at a quiet time. You want to be relaxed and pressure free when you do this maneuver. Doing such a parking under pressure when there are eyes watching you is stressful. 2. Keep your car straight and parallel to the tips of the parking base at the start of the maneuver. This parking is a 90 degree parking, so you need to make sure that your car is straight. If you stop your car tilted to the left or tilted to the right, this parking is not going to work. 3. Use a sticky tape. Often some learners get confused as to which direction to turn the steering wheel when reversing. At the beginning of the video, we briefly discussed that if you want the back of the car to go to the left, you need to turn the steering wheel to the left or towards the target bay. When doing this, the front of the car will swing to the right, but that's normal. To help you remember which way to turn the steering wheel at the start of this maneuver, here is a helpful trick. Find a spot to stop and ensure that your car tires are straight. When your car tires are straight, your steering wheel looks like this. This part is facing down and you can easily read the words written on the steering wheel. In this position, place a sticky note in the shape of an arrow pointing to the left on top of your steering wheel. You can even write the word first on it. And just before reversing, take a look at your steering wheel to see the arrow. And you know which way to turn the wheel. The steering wheel is turned only twice during this parking maneuver. If you know that you need to turn it to the left first, you'll remember that the second time is to the right. And again, yes, it's perfectly fine to keep this sticky arrow on your steering wheel during your driving test. 4. Use a pair of blind spot mirrors. Blind spot mirrors can be a useful addition to your car. If your car mirrors are large, like my car mirrors, you can see the lines clearly through them. But if they are not large enough or are flat, like the Mazda 2 mirrors, you can purchase a pair of blind spot mirrors and attach them to your mirrors. There are many different types of blind spot mirrors out there, but I personally like these ones because they can be adjusted to any angles you prefer and they are also frameless, which I think looks better. You can buy these from Amazon at a very affordable price of just 9 Australian dollars at the time of recording this video. I have included a link to the product in the video description. Let's see how they work on a Mazda 2 car. This is what you see through the normal mirrors. And this is what you see with blind spot mirrors. As you can see, the difference is significant. And yes, having blind spot mirrors during a driving test is permissible. And this is for the right side. Just be careful not to drop and break them like I did. I have already bought a new pair and replaced them though. 5. Practice and don't be too hard on yourself if you don't get it right after a few attempts. See what you're doing wrong. 
It could be your distance from the parking bay, but it is too close or too far. It could be your reference point, the initial stopping position, your car's speed when reversing, not fully turning the steering wheel to the left, or not straightening the steering wheel in time. Also, don't stress if you didn't end up straight in the bay or too close to one side. You can always make adjustments. This is a common occurrence in shopping center car parks where even experienced drivers may not get it right with just one attempt. After all, we are all human and we are prone to making mistakes in our judgment. In an upcoming video, we will go through reverse parking between two cars, which contrary to popular belief is not any harder. Reverse bay parking between two cars can only cause problems under certain conditions. We just need a little tweak to be able to park between two cars. The video is coming soon, so subscribe and stay tuned.